Hello, viewer. Welcome back. Drone Tech here. I have something for you today that's going to give many of you embolisms. And for those of you who may not know a lot about this topic, I hope it's informative. Because right now, the media and guys like this are purposely trying to mislead people who may not know any better. And today we're dealing with this guy named Jed Legum. Uh, he says he writes for Popular Information, an independent newsletter dedicated to accountability journalism. Right, because... You know, actually what he's doing here is deflective journalism or maybe more accurately deflective propaganda because what he's doing right here, he claims to be debunking disinformation coming from Elon Musk, but what he's actually doing is spreading disinformation. So Judd starts out here, Elon Musk is using Twitter to promote various memes about the anti-white bias of the media to his 138 million followers. The stuff he is tweeting is complete BS. Follow along with receipts. So he does bring receipts, but they're wrong. Or he doesn't know how to properly understand these stats. Not that I'm some sort of expert in this, but it's not that hard to understand. And he either seems to be not getting it or he is purposely lying. And oh my gosh, Elon Musk is sharing memes talking about the anti-white bias of the media. Oh no. So moving on, in response to the murder of Jordan Neely, have pushed unsubstantiated, misleading, and false information to suggest that the media is only covering the story because Neely was black and the man that killed him, Daniel Perry, is white. Musk is really into it, suggesting that Musk is some sort of insane Nazi racist because he's asking questions about this. And they're legitimate questions because we really don't hear about black-on-white violence. If you look at the FBI stats, there's quite a bit more black-on-white murder than the other way around, yet you never hear about it. It's never a national news story. Sure, you can get online, probably find an online story about it, but it's never going to be mass spread. There's never going to be a larger discussion about anti-white violence or anti-white racism. There won't be any of that, and that's what Elon Musk is talking about. Like, for instance, nobody knows the names of white victims of black racial violence against white people. Nobody knows any of those names because there's never any sort of marches or protests or any controversy whatsoever when a white person is killed by a black person or by another minority. So, for example, the Twitter account and wokeness published a chart suggesting black on white crime is the most common form of crime, but receives scant media attention. Musk accepted the premise as true and promoted the tweet. It has now been viewed 16 million times, and you probably recognize this because I posted it in YouTube. And it's actually accurate. This is accurate. Um, black on white violence is uh, quite a bit more than black on Hispanic or white on black or white on Hispanic or Hispanic on white or Hispanic on black. Now, this is a chart of interracial violent crime incidents. So this is about, this isn't, you know, white on white or black on black. This is about racist violence against other races. So uh, right off the bat, he's misleading. He continues, the chart, which has circulated online since 2019, is grossly misleading. It's not. For one thing, it excludes all crimes committed against victims of the same race. Well, yeah, it's clearly labeled that that's what the graph is. It's intra, it's interracial violent crime incidents. It's not intra-racial. That would be a, a, a separate stat, which you could include, but it doesn't really have any bearing on what we're talking about here. Um, for one thing, it excludes all crimes committed against victims of the same race. Yeah, obviously. If you redo the chart with that data, it becomes clear that white on white crime is by far the most common. This is incorrect. The chart that he's posted here is misleading because it only shows the raw numbers. Now, of course, those numbers are gonna be much bigger on the white side because there's a lot more white people in this country. There is about 65% white people in this country. There's around 13% uh, black people in this country. So the chart is misleading because it's not uh, adjusting for population size. Then going on, he says, further, the chart does not normalize the data based on population. There are a lot more white people than non-white people in the United States. I was confused about this at first because I thought he was referring to his graph, but I think he's actually referring to the other graph, which actually does adjust for population size. It's his chart that does not adjust for population size. He says, when you account for that, the rate of black on white crime is similar to the rate of white on black crime. And he gives this chart. Now this chart is from 2018. Uh, the stats are similar going forward, but this particular chart is showing violent incidents, not murder, first of all. And of 3,581,000 incidents, 62% of those violent incidents were white on white, but 15.3% of those violent incidents were black on white. Then when you look at black, there were 563,000, 
uh, <clears> 10 percent <throat> of those were done by white people, 70 percent done by black. So 10 percent versus 15 percent. The 50 percent is a bigger number. And again, think about the population size difference. There's a lot more white people than there are black people. So it's kind of significant that there's such a lopsided difference there. Now, I know this is kind of lame uh, reading my own tweet, but I responded to him saying this data is incorrect or not adjusted for population size. You're being intentionally misleading. Black on black is the highest rate of murder in this country, around 87%. Now, I didn't realize, I just noticed that that was violent crime incidents. So you see how he's fudging the data there a little bit. But from Reuters.com, which I think everybody can agree is uh, at least a left-leaning uh, outlet. So they wouldn't be lying about this. According to the FBI, this FBI data of the 2,491 murders of black people reported in the U.S. Uh, in uh, 2013, 2,000 of those perpetrators, 90% were black. And 189 per perpetrators, 76 were white. And then of 3,000 murders of white people, uh, 2,509 perpetrators, 83% were white, okay, while 409 perpetrators, 13% were black. So what you have here is on black on black murder, it's 90%, uh, percent, and white on white murder is 83.5%. So 90% is a bigger number than 83.5%, as well as showing that white on black murders were 7.6% of all murders, while black on white murders were 13.6%. That's a significantly larger number. Bigger number denotes that that it's a bigger problem and yet you wouldn't know that by watching the media and the media the narrative is that black people are being hunted down are and are in danger from white people and the same goes for police shootings you never hear about unarmed white people being shot by police but yet the media goes out of their way to report it when it's a black person even if that black person was a criminal and the police shooting was justified like in the case of Michael Brown or Jacob Blake but everybody knows those names nobody knows the names of white people shot by police and when it does come to police police shooting black people. The media propaganda is so intense that Democrats and liberals, when they're asked, have these inflated views of how many black people are shot. Continuing on, this is just one of many tweets promoted by Musk that contain basic statistical and factual errors. Like, the errors are coming from Judd Legum, all to prove that the media has it out for white people. The reality is that actual studies of U.S. media coverage show the opposite. You know, I'd love to see these studies. Crime perpetuated by black people received disproportionate coverage. Where is this coverage coming from? I ask again. We know the names of many of these uh, uh, black men who have been killed either by police or by people defending themselves. Uh, people who tend to be criminals and the shootings tend to be justified. Yet we know those people's names. People like Michael Brown or uh, Jacob Blake. So on his website, he has this. The facts about how the media covers crime. Crime coverage has always been and continues to be biased, of course. Since the 1990s, research has shown that the media propagates negative stereotypes of black people as criminals. Okay, so right off the bat, we're starting in the 1990s for this. In a 1998 study of Philadelphia local news, researchers found that people of color were overrepresented as perpetrators of violence against white actors at a rate that was four times more than what was captured by homicide data. And I find it hard to believe because uh, black people in general, black men in general, are overrepresented in violent crimes. And that may have been reflected in the coverage, which would explain later we uh, started seeing things like cops uh, not wanting to show the black perpetrators and news starting to cover up this stuff because they felt it was blow ba it was blowing back negatively on those communities. We saw the same thing with Islamic terrorist attacks where the media would go out of its way to kind of cover up who was the attacker because they were afraid of negative backlash on the Muslim community. So he says, similarly, in 2000, a study of Los Angeles local news found that black and Latino people were more likely to be portrayed as perpetrators compared to white people. That's probably because black and Latino uh, gang members are responsible for the vast majority of violent crime in Los Angeles. So that makes sense. So again, we're going forward here. He's still in the uh, late 90s, early 2000s. Another study in 2003 indicated that the news disproportionately covered homicides that involved a black perpetrator and a white victim, particularly if the victim was a woman. More recently, in 2016, a group of researchers found that victims killed in predominantly black neighborhoods in Chicago receive less news coverage than those killed in non-Hispanic white neighborhoods on average. Black victims receive 2.8 news articles compared to white victims who receive 3.8 articles. A separate study from 2021 finds that compared to black victims, the media is four times more likely to present a white victim with a photo featuring friends or family. Like, I don't even know what, first of all, he's not talking about, mostly he's not talking about news coverage 
coverage, national news coverage, which is what I'm talking about. He's talking about news articles, and I don't even quite understand what he's saying here. He found that victims killed in predominantly black neighborhoods received less news. That's what we're saying. We're saying that the, that the majority of gun violence and murder in this country is coming from those communities. And yet every time we hear about gun violence, they're talking about these mass shootings perpetrated by white people. And they're saying that's the real threat. They talk about mass shootings, how they happen every day, giving the impression that these are, you know, mass shootings at malls, uh, like, like what we've seen recently or like calling mine at, at schools, but it's not, it's black on black and black on Latino gang violence happening in places like Chicago and in LA. Now, conversely, I'll present to you this Washington Free Beacon article titled, Yes, the Media Bury the Race of Murders If They're Not White. And this is something we've all watched. We've seen it over and over again. And even to the point where when a white shooter shoots other white people, they still portray that as if it was some sort of race-based shooting like Kyle Rittenhouse or even Charlottesville where a white guy killed another white person and yet it's treated as if black people were attacked and killed on that day. Says Frank James, the man arrested for two days, Tuesday's New York City uh, New York City subway shooting, is a black nationalist and outspoken racist who railed against whites, Jews, and Hispanics. A careful reader of the New York Times uh, could be forgiven for overlooking that. In a near, nearly 2,000-word article on the attack, James' race is not mentioned once. The same is true of coverage offered up by Reuters and the Washington Post, who only mentioned James' race in relation, in relation to his condemnation of training programs for low-income black youths. So, and that's, I think, what most of us have noticed, that in these stories, they do their best to cover it up. If it's a white perpetrator and a black victim, that is first and foremost in the headline. And that will be the entire structure of the narrative surrounding it. Even if there's no evidence that it had anything to do with race. The perfect example of that is George Floyd, where there was no evidence of racism. Nobody uh, charged it. There, it was never brought up in the trial. And yet the entire narrative surrounding that was racial. So it doesn't seem to matter what the facts are. Uh, the, the media is going to either cover up facts or make them up in order to uh, support and push their narrative. The article continues. To measure these choices, we identified the race of the offender in roughly 900 stories where his name, but not his race, was mentioned. First, by looking at the race of the people uh, with the same name and the census data, and then hand confirming race based or mugshots or other images published in the local news stories. Now, I did a video on this study when it came out, if you remember. But how often did newspapers mention uh, a murderer's race? When it was white, it was 23% of the articles. Native American, uh, 50. Hispanic, 3%. Black, 6%. Which would is right in line with, with what I experience on a regular basis. Now, you can confirm all of this data in the FBI 2019 uh, expanded homicide data table. Uh, which you can't find any more of this data after 29, strangely. But you can see here clearly, and this is not broken down by population size, but you can see there are significantly more black on white murders than there are white on black. 246 white on black murders, 566 black on white. And again, this is not adjusted for population size, but if it were, you would see that there's a much higher rate of black on white murder than the other way around. Because there's such a small population size committing so much more murder than the higher population side of whites that are underrepresented. Lastly, I want to finish on one more website uh, to back up what I'm saying here. This is a fact check by Channel 4 News. Do black Americans commit more crime? It's important to note that blacks commit nearly half of all murders in this country, which is astounding when you take into consideration the fact that they only make up 12 to 13 percent of the population. That's actually high because this is mostly men committing these. And so we're talking like five to six percent of the population. So if you scroll down here, you're going to see the analysis. It's true that around 13 percent of Americans are black, according to the latest estimates. And yes, according to the Bureau of Justice Statistics, black offenders committed 52% of homicide uh, recorded in the, in the data between 1980 and 2008. Uh, and I will tell you, this data has continued steadily up until this point, at least up until 2019. Only 45% of the offenders were white. Homicide is a broad ca broader category than murder, but let's not split hairs. Blacks were disproportionately likely to commit homicide and to be the victims. Exactly. They are more likely to uh, be the uh, perpetrators of homicide against white people, and they are more likely to be the victims because the highest rate of murder in this country is black on black, which, as I showed you, is significantly higher than white on white.
All right, folks, that's all I have for that one. Thanks for watching. If you found it informative, please hit that like button, share, subscribe, and make sure to leave a comment to continue the discussion. Thanks a lot. I'll see you all in the next one.